Calling all detectives. Some people can't pick a single horse race winner. But I once had a case of a man who could pick the winner of every race, every time. That is the situation on this page from my casebook. The casebook of Jerry Browning, Private Detective. If there's one thing I, Jerry Browning, have learned in ten years as a private detective, it's that it doesn't pay to have a system, especially a good one. Lovian wins, Mr. Shadwell. He wins at six to one. And you win twelve dollars, Mr. Shadwell. The third winner in a row on my system. I was sitting one row behind the old man and his young companion. On my left sat Parley Pete Fogarty, and on the other side, best bet Benji Simpson, two characters who don't consider horse racing a sport. Parley Pete shuddered. For me to hate that guy would be no trouble whatever. Best bet Benji hunched his shoulders. I don't know. If a guy is going to assist him and you got the guy... His voice trailed off. I left my two companions, didn't return to my seat until after the sixth race. Both Parley Pete and Best Bet Benji had gone, but up ahead, the old man and the youngster, who was maybe 22, 23 years old, were still in the seats. I heard the old man say, Six winners in a row, Vince. Very commendable. We'll win the next one, too, Mr. Shadwell. The seventh race was won by an outsider named Green Lawn Maggie at 30 to 1. The only reason the creature won was because two of the favorites bumped on the far turn. The kid couldn't possibly have this winner. Just the same. 30 to 1! You win $60, Mr. Shotwell! Oh boy, $60 for two! I watched him merge with the crowd. Ten minutes later, he hadn't returned. The last race came and went. The crowd was beginning to thin out when the old man stood up in his seat. I want a policeman. My secretary has been kidnapped. A man who picked seven winners in a row missed a perfect day because he was kidnapped before the last race. I faced the old man. I'm a private detective, Mr. Shotwell. I am Hiram Shotwell of Shotwell's Ball Bearings. My secretary is Vincent Abernathy, and I will pay a $500 reward for the arrest and conviction of the person or persons who've harmed him. Report to me at my office. I spent several hours making the rounds where Parley Pete and Best Bet Benji hung out. I knew I'd find them. An easy way for my system to earn $500. About 8 o'clock at Tim's Ale House. Hello, Benji. Where's Parley Pete? Benji spun around. Uh, hello, Jerry. I closed my hand over Benji's wrist. Kidnapping is a serious offense, Benji. Will you take me to where Pete is holding Vince Abernathy, or must we get rough about it? Benji opened his mouth and closed it again and stared past my shoulder. I looked, too, at Parley Pete coming through the door. Hello, Benji. Jerry. There was a heavy bruise on Pete's chin and his left eye was almost closed. What happened to you, Pete? And where's the guy with the horse racing system? Pete picked up Benji's drink, gulped it. I wouldn't catch it, Jerry. Uh, Benji and I uh, talked him into coming home with us. Only... Uh... Honest John Brophy hide him too, so... Pete, are you trying to tell me that Honest John kidnapped Vince from you? Well, yeah, you might say he did just that. Honest John was a gambler who controlled half a dozen bookie joints as well as the club rendezvous. Getting Vince out of his clutches was going to be a lot harder trick than I'd originally figured on. I opened the front door of the rendezvous and stepped into a shambles. The joint was an absolute wreck. Tables, chairs overturned, wall hangings torn down, and at the shattered bar sat Honest John and three of his hoodlums, all looking as though they'd been through a ringer. What do you want, Brownie? I was looking for a kid named Vince Abernathy, but it looks like I'm too late. What happened, John? Honest John put his head between his hands. Joe Lorillard wanted to buy the kid from me. Made a mistake. I didn't sell. I walked out, went back to my car. Joe Lorillard was the top racketeer in town. Nobody could get Vince alive from Joe Lorillard. Unless... 
Mr. Shotwell received me in his library. Mr. Browning, my secretary, young Abernethy, merely perfected a racing system to demonstrate that he is capable of developing an inventory control system on ball bearing sizes, which is, of course, much more complicated than horse racing. You mean he did all this for a promotion? Certainly. I ask you, what is more important than ball bearings, Mr. Browning? I can't imagine. Okay, Mr. Shotwell, I'll try to get your secretary back all in one piece. Joe Lorillard's apartment was a penthouse overlooking River Drive. You got me wrong, Browning. I'm a art collector, see? Then gaggy is my specialty, not snatching. Yeah, yeah, sure, Joe, but I thought you ought to know. This Vince Abernathy kid and his system for beating the horses. <laughs> you don't need him. I can tell you what his system is. Lorillard smiled. Not that I care, but just for laughs. You can tell me his system. Easy. He bets on every horse and every race. Lorillard's face turned a dull purple. You're kidding. Then if you're not, I'll cut his heart out. Don't do that, Joe. He wasn't trying to sell you anything. Just building himself up for a better job with his boss. Lorillard sat back, started to laugh. <laughs> Some joke. <laughs> on, uh, on his John, I mean. <laughs> okay, Browning. Not that I got the punk, you understand, but if you wait downstairs, maybe you might run into him. I waited downstairs. And about ten minutes later, a wild-eyed, disheveled youngster staggered out. I grabbed him, shoved him into my car. It took a while, but I finally convinced Abernathy that he hadn't been kidnapped again. Then I read the riot act to him. But, Mr. Browning, I have got a system for inventory control on ball bearing sizes, and all I wanted was a chance to test it. That's why I spent over $300 of my own money on those horse race tickets. Okay, Vince. But if I were you, I wouldn't go near a racetrack again for a long, long time. There was a faraway look in his eyes. You know, Mr. Browning, it might not be too hard to find a system for predicting those horses. He gulped, shook himself. Uh, okay, Mr. Browning, I'll do just as you say. And that was all. I cooked up an amnesia story to cover Abernathy's disappearance, which meant that I got no fee for recovering him. Like I said, there's only one thing wrong with systems. I never yet found one that worked.